What's up, you meth-munching, misanthropic meat mashers? Welcome to Grunt Speak. Live from the lair! Gleep, clap, and floop de doo at your service, of course. All right. Welcome to the show. Ah, oh, yeah. It's been a while. It's been, been a week. Well, and then yeah. next Thursday, we're taking off because you're out of state. I'll be out of town. I'm taking some days. I'm going to get my blood scrubbed. Get your blood scrubbed. That's where they suck out all my blood, and they scrub it and put it back in. And then I'm... I'm I might get a couple injections of my own stem cells into my lower back and shit. All right, whatever yeah, works. So help with pain is, is the the plan. Yeah, I might listen, man. I've walked around the earth twice by on foot while carrying the sum combined weight of a dreadnought battleship, and it's not really good for your structural integrity. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm into that. What are you What, the, what are you gonna do? Man? Uh, we got a, somebody in the chat wants to know what does that cost? What cost? The blood scrubbing. Uh, 
I believe <clears throat> it's like eighteen hundred bucks. So, okay. But my my buddy owns a business, so I get like a deep discount. Oh, okay. I think I'll pay like three hundred out of pocket. Yeah. If you got a woman who owns a business, you get a balls deep discount. Yes, balls deep discount. Got to write that down. <laughs> Speaking of which, we uh, like work stories and whatnot, we have one that's been kind of sitting for a little bit. I've been trying to figure out where to fit it in, no pun intended after that joke, of course. Um, <laughs> and it comes from a person who wants to remain anonymous because apparently the people at work are still a little sore over them watching the show. Nice. So I go to work early and I end up listening to the show via Rumble the next day, provided I can get a signal in the building. One day I was listening to the show over Bluetooth speaker and you guys played the No-No Square song. Just as our very left HR director walks by. Yeah! <laughs> she stops, looks at me. I can see the growing anger in her eyes. And proceeds to tell me that what I'm listening to isn't appropriate in a work environment. <laughs> the No-No Square song, which was written by Woke Leftoids. Hilarious. Yes. That's why we use it. Didn't it come from like Sweden or something? Uh, Britain, I think. I don't know. It yeah, was I, I think the NHS spent like two million euros yeah. developing that stupid song and dance. That's like two, back then it was two point three million American dollars. Like that's a small group project in the sixth grade. I could have spent two million euros on. I that. literally, we, they could have made that commercial in the back of a classroom, just <laughs> fucking around. <laughs> that's just what it looks like. They yeah. made it in the back of a class. I mean, our ours is, our box wine in Calan is better than hers. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Probably took me longer to put that graphic together. <laughs> We had to film him in green screen, like outside, and then I had to rotoscope it because his limbs kept going outside the fucking screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you're a good fucking video editor, bro. Yeah, I do my best. I had some help for that one. Mm. So it's not appropriate for a work environment. I said, oh, really? Paused the show, held up a finger, and said, well, is that okay then? Playing in the background is some seriously vulgar rap. Going into detail about the pussy. <laughs> she became more visibly upset. So I told her that I would turn mine off if she made them turn theirs off, which is never going to happen. <laughs> she stormed off and said something to my manager, who I said the same thing to. He tried to get me to agree to turn it off, but I said I would not give in. So now every time she walks by, I do the no no dance just for shits and giggles. Stop! Don't touch me there! This is my no no swear! You miss me, <laughs> son of a bitch, booster. <laughs> uh, what a time to be alive! Oh my lord, it's what crazy. You... Fuck it, we're on the verge of World War Three. It people, is. Yeah, people don't know uh, what sex they are. Uh, Isn't it hilarious how back in 2020, when he was running, more like aimlessly sauntering for president from his basement. Mm -hmm. uh, Biden was like, I'm afraid that Trump's going to get us into a world war with Iran. And? Uh, Again. Care to revisit that prior statement, Joe? The left accuses the right of things they're going to do or want to do. Oh, like Russian Russian conspiratorial stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Russian way. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but we also have some videos for you. Of course. Oh, here we go. I believe this one here comes from Ascension. Sent it in, and it's quite glorious. You guys are going to love it. I love Halloween pranks like this. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> when men scream like women, there's just nothing better. There we go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. Here we go. Oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I love like, that shit. It's like Mini Samara comes out, and then Justin Trudeau comes out in blackface. 
Well, I, I think that was uh, his squeeze trying to make herself look younger. I know, but it's funnier than when it, to call it Justin Trudeau because he's such a <laughs> pussy. <laughs> yes, he is. And that's why his wife left him. Oh, well, his wife man. left him because he likes to drain other men's straws, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I think I do. Wah, wah, wah. He's a two, uh, two legs and a butthole man. Yeah. <laughs> all you need is two legs and a butthole. You're all good. Your butt gina. And wash your butt gina in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need to wash your butt gina in the sink if you go to school in Germany. Oh, yeah. Oh. I haven't seen a, a cultural blunder this amazing since the last time Germany had a cultural blunder. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Students at University of Augsburg demand glory holes in lecture halls to help relieve stress on campus. <laughs> like, like you know that was a really great great exam when you sent over the links today i literally <laughs> spent about five minutes laughing hysterically at that headline uh, what could you even say uh, i mean i can't even believe the gateway pundit even I mean, oh my god I mean, th- this is how insane wokeism has become where you can figure out a way to somehow make Glory holes in college somehow have to do with equity and mental health. Like I, I have like a small <laughs> comedy routine about glory holes and karma. <laughs> but you know, first of all, uh, <laughs> you need to find you know willing glory hole attendants. Which you know, I don't know. If, I mean, they do have a red light district, so you never know. <laughs> uh, and then, I mean, it, listen, most dudes. Really don't perform well while people are watching them. <laughs> Put in the ticket in the hole. <laughs> He's finding, finding. Attack those He's finding. Over and over again. <laughs> stuck at the schwanz. It's quite, quite bad. Uh, this is going to be like Downfall Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. So they're demanding glory holes. And <laughs> I can't even say that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> they say glory holes used for anonymous sex should be built in the lecture all opposite the entrance. Students argue the glory holes will assist with the diversification on campus. Oh my god. I told you like that this is how brain warped wokeism has become. Yes. I can figure out some way to make this woke. It's even though all I want is to get my dick wet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, it, it could work the other way. You can have a dude pumping up his tire. Put it through the hole, and it, you know whatever sits on it sits on it. It could be a, you know, a, a vertical smile, or it could be two legs in a butthole. Who knows? Yeah, you'll just pretend that the person on the other side is a chick. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. Oddly enough, the five o'clock shadow actually made it kind of feel. Bad. That's how you get the French tickler that grows back. Oh God. Like the, the the giant wart at the end of uh, that dude's penis had to be scooped oh. out with a melon baller. God, no, they burned it off with uh, liquid nitrogen, but it it looked it's like even worse. It looked like it was scooped out with a me- melon baller. It was bad. Toothless goats looking for a carrot on the other <laughs> side. Yeah, you don't know what's on the other end. Uh, no. it's I mean it's anonymous for a reason. Yeah. Students say the associated stress reduction would ensure a more positive working atmosphere on campus. You know, this actually reminds me. I forget the name of it. Maybe somebody in the chat can help me out. It was a, a British com- a sketch comedy show. Simon Pegg was on it. And it was an office full of people, and they were talking about how the most positive thing in their work environment was that you were allowed to wank whenever and wherever in the office. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> that was fucking crazy. Yeah, I mean, I know, like, you know, the paid lunches are great and everything, but really the reason why I wanted to come and work here, the wanking, that's why I wanted to come and work here. <laughs> So now Augsburg is going to be the glory hole center of uh, Germany. That if they get is their way, hilarious. <laughs> like, uh, listen, if I was paying for one of my kids to go to a school and I saw that headline, I would stop paying that school. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, ah, uh, hmm. No. Apparently, it is going to be discussed at a convention meeting, which already took place. So we're going to have to see if there's an update to this story at some point. Uh, listen, if you can find video of this discussion at the convention, I'm going to have to. I, I would love to see that video. 
I love this. Three glory holes are to be built in the lecture hall opposite the entrance where the information boards are currently located. So you can look for a job and get a job at the same time. It's, it's job <laughs> squared. It is job squared. Yeah, job squared. These should be built by the Space and Construction Department and cleaned by building management. In addition, they should be soundproof and opaque. The glory holes should be designed to be as barrier-free as possible. Doesn't that kind of go against the whole idea? Yeah. The height should be adjustable. <laughs> so a lot of uh, parameters you're putting on trying right. to get your dick sucked. Okay. F well, first of all. There should be wall handles so you can hold on to it. Like, yeah, baby. All right. I need an oh, shit handle at the moment I go, oh, shit. If you ever doubted me talking about dick thinking <laughs> glory holes are evidence that's exactly what they're doing oh that is crazy uh, and you know what's gonna happen sooner or later the vada spread on that campus is gonna go through the roof and then yeah. they're gonna be like well maybe this wasn't such a good idea i mean if there's anything that doesn't give a shit about wokeism or equity and is an equal opportunity offender, it's gonorrhea. Yeah, so. listen, man, you don't want to put your wiener in a mouth that's had like <laughs> 25 other wieners in it that day. You don't know if one has been infected. <laughs> it gets worse. All it takes is one scrape of a tooth, and you get a, a dick worm. <laughs> It gets worse. It's, there's more. Oh my God! No, <laughs> the I didn't read this far. I should read this like a like a Navy crewman. The lights should be dimmable, and possible knee padding should be installed. In addition, <laughs> condoms, licking wipes, lubricants, and disinfectants should be provided free of charge in the glory holes. Trash cans are also needed, per the application. All right. Wow. So they want a glory <laughs> hole. <laughs> and they don't want to pay anything. They don't want to pay for the glory hole. All right, first of all. Free syphilis! <laughs> first of all, all right, let, let, let's just be real here. Who are they going to get to suck all these dicks? In my opinion? That's probably going to be very expensive. There's going to be some wango tango going on. I think so, too. I, I have a feeling a lot of these lonely teachers who... Uh, you know, haven't seen haven't seen a penis that wasn't dishwasher safe in several decades. Are going to be getting in there, and uh, you know, because that raises their value, right? Well, you, you could wind up with a one tooth Tony. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Groundskeeper Willie. Yeah. Ah, he's a pineapple, you filthy bastard. <laughs> puh, puh. <laughs> What the hell is going on in this world, man? <laughs> we have, are officially in clown world, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm over here in my glory holeless existence, and we got Jiztopia on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. Jiztopia. <laughs> what wow. the hell? <laughs> wow. I, 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 I mean, mean, logistically, that just sounds like a nightmare. It is. How are you going to be the guy? I want to interview for the glory hole position. Could you please open your mouth? Yeah. Can you stick this carrot in there? How far is this? Uh huh. Can it touch the back without gagging? Have you, have you done sex work for money before? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I, I don't want to be that guy to do that uh, job. No. Anymore. That's how you get you catch a charge. But that's when they actually do put OnlyFans on their job resume. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how you catch a charge. Yeah. And a most important thing, I mean, we said, like the biggest issue here, and apparently the biggest attraction for some dick thinking mother fornicators, is the anonymity factor. Yeah. Well, you got all these dating shows, you know, that are you have segments of them going viral that explain to you exactly why this is not a good idea, and this does it in 32 seconds. And not this right. guy, uh, definitely Asian, definitely a genius. I'm definitely very into Asian men. What race do you think I am? White to Asian, maybe? I am Asian, actually. Oh. Yeah. Can we oh hug? My God. Sure. Can okay. we hug? Ah, oh, see how smart he is? He gets a so good feel fat. for her size, and then immediately, we're done here. <laughs> Nathan. I felt that it was something where I could become a really good friend with you. <laughs> That's just kind of a gut feeling for me. Because I felt your gut. Well, first of all, she, she's got like uh, the warning hair. 
She, well, the thing is, he can't see her. They're no, both blindfolded. So he's uh, lucky. He did the right thing. She's so, obviously gravitationally challenged. Uh, yeah. If you ever do this speed dating mm. blindfolded no, nonsense, no, no, no. ask him for a hug. <clears throat> You'll find out whether, very quickly whether or not they're fat or whether or not they shower. Uh, or Hopefully they brush they their they teeth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Quite disgusting. You think? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. But yeah, at least it's not. At least it's not a glory hole. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that's horrendous. Anyway, I got I another story here. I cannot believe that made it to the paper. Oh my <laughs> god! And I got a story here that's been chilling on the back burner from Rusty Bad Wrench that kind of fits in with the glory hole thing. Just saying. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be able to find anything that tied in with that particular current event, but this is ridiculous. Well, there you go. I made some time to send you one of my adventures mm -hmm. with a long past dear friend of mine. You won't believe any of this, but I swear it's true. Mm. I was supposed to go on a weekend trip to the Easy Rider convention in Ohio. Biker Bob mm. lined up a chick to go with me. Me, Bob, and the rest of the group were planning for a great weekend. I got hit with having to work overtime on that Friday and had to finish a job on Saturday, so I canceled on the group. On Saturday, I was done working and home by noon. I had a message from Biker Bob. Basically, he said, grab his truck drive to Ohio, <laughs> pick him and his bike up, and take him to the hospital. Ooh. Everything after this point was in a random order of events. I'll start with how we got to the phone call. I watched live on video Biker Bob getting wasted on Jim Beam and then getting into a fight with a guy that was about six foot five and all muscle. Biker Bob beat that dude like a redheaded stepchild. Wow. <laughs> Completely shit-faced, jumping around that dude like Muhammad Ali. It was hysterical, and I couldn't stop laughing. When the dude Biker Bob was fighting with was laying on the ground, Biker Bob was taunting him by saying, You want some more, big boy? Get up and get some. And he was saying this while doing a Mike Tyson voice imitation. <laughs> nice. You want some more, big boy? Get up and get some. <laughs> Take note that Biker Bob is around 5'5". Five, five. Or 5'6". Wow. So after the fight, Biker Bob got into an argument with his brother, and to show his ass, he started his bike and did burnouts and donuts, you know, stupid shit, dumped his bike and got hurt. Yeah. So I went to get him and bring him home, then to the hospital. Now, this is what I saw at the campgrounds and on the home movies that were made there. From the campgrounds, you could see the exercise yard for a prison or detention center. I'm not sure which. Well, they could also see the campgrounds. There was a gaggle of biker sleuths standing at the campground fence, completely nude, taunting the prisoners in the exercise yard. Because that's smart. Yes, there was self-diddling going on and taunts toward the prisoners about how they can't get out of death. In my opinion, that's just wrong. Still, it was funny looking. It pissed <clears throat> off all the inmates. That is so messed up, man. That's messed up. <laughs> and then there was Crooked Dick. This old guy was there every single year and never left the campground. There was always a line at his tent of biker sleuths that wanted a piece, and he was more than willing to give it to them. <laughs> this is the rigs of the biker club. Yep, apparently. yep. Why did they call him Crooked Dick, you may ask? Well, it had to be all of 12 inches long with a hard bend to the left. Wow. I had to salute that old fucker when he walked out of his tent and <laughs> waved with the goods on full display. Oh, my God. <laughs> As a side note, <clears throat> campground was basically a nudist camp. If you were wearing clothes, you were the oddball. I met a police officer who was working the camp. She was wearing the police dress skirt, no panties, gear belt with her gear, and was topless. Mm. Yes, she was a real cop and not a stripper, and damn, she was good looking, mm. like a real life nine. Her partner was a building with arms and legs, so she was perfectly fine. I asked them why they were ignoring all the law breaking. For example, the table that was literally 10 feet away with a give and take jar full of recreational substances like booger sugar. <laughs> Their response was, well, we'd have to arrest every single person here. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. we're here to do is keep the peace. We don't care about anything else. I guess that made sense. Not long after, two naked chicks walked up to me and offered to suck me off. The only condition was, now this is where it ties in. Oh, no. I had to poke it through one of the holes they drilled in a piece of plywood they had. No. You know, they wanted to live the glory hole fantasy is what they said. No. Now pay attention, everyone. What was actually going on here is you'd poke it through your size hole, and then they'd get you hard and walk away. Mm. Now your dick is stuck in a piece of wood. 
And what's worse is that plywood acts as a cock ring, keeping you hard for hours while you stand there holding a piece of plywood, waiting for the blood to slowly bleed off and make it soft. Yeah, actually, you gotta you gotta get a needle decompression. <sighs> needle to the dick. Needle the wiener. <sighs> no, thank you. No good. No good. <laughs> Disgusting. No, I didn't fall for that either. Oh, good. You're not dick thick. There was a track there where you could cruise your bike around. Oh, there was a lifted 4x4 truck driving around the track. A fully nude woman was laying on the roof of the truck while another fully nude woman was standing in the bed of the truck having fish taco for lunch, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. There was a music concert. Clothes were mandatory. When the concert was over and the stage was cleared, a large group of women climbed up onto the stage. There must have been a dozen or more. Removed their clothes and had a liver licking group grope. I was not there to see that in person. I wish mm. I was. <laughs> I watched that on the video, film at 11 style. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only outstanding acts that I can recall. Walking through the campground was like being in a film studio where they only make corn, and they happen to be filming a bunch of movies all at once. I've never seen anything else that extreme in my life. Everywhere you looked, someone was getting their innards rearranged. <laughs> I'll leave on that note. Kind of Telling this story kind of makes me miss Biker Bob. <laughs> Biker Bob. <laughs> Till we meet again. I've heard some stories about some of these biker rallies for shit that goes on there. And uh, in today's day and age, I'm going to be honest, bro. Uh, I would not do that. I would not do that. You're going to wind up with some serious infection of some type, and it might not be curable. It wouldn't be very No, nice. thank you. No, definitely <clears throat> not. I uh, hope everybody's having a good evening. Hope you had a good week. Uh, Halloween going out. Everybody having fun with their kids, all that good shit. So. Yeah, like if you are are wondering what happened on Tuesday, um, it was Halloween. Halloween, mm -hmm. and then uh, I had the stream yesterday, which went pretty good. So if you guys uh, missed that one, tune into it. I was out with my kid. Yeah, he yeah. had a good time. It was snowing here. How much can? How many pounds of candy? Uh, we didn't weigh it or anything, but we only went out for about an hour. But everybody, like, there's so few kids now in our neighborhood, it seems like everybody's just throwing handfuls of shit in. So he, he's doing just fine. Okay. He's got plenty in there to piss off his dentist. All right. Works for me. <laughs> but we're about to get into some meat and potatoes. Oh, here we go. So I got a good video to kind of segue you into exactly what it well, is we're looking let's at. Let's give here. a little description. little description. Well... <coughs> Women are allowed to be totally reprehensible. You're not. All right, so say what you just said again. All you do is play 2K, play basketball, and, like, Snapchat other... But stop fucking pointing the camera at me. Like, it's not a joke. And how is me Snapchatting other girls a problem? What do you mean? How is it a problem? How is it not a fucking problem? How is yeah. it not a problem? Son, you, you actually have a boyfriend. Oh like, I'm the side Oh, my God. I I'm have the, a, I'm I the have a boyfriend. <laughs> oh, I have a boyfriend, but, like... Stop. He's like, a side piece. Stop. We're talking about you. No, you're crazy. You must not know who I am. Crazy? Stop fucking bugging. calling me crazy. Stop. Well, like, you're such a fucking shoe narcissist. Fits. I'm a narcissist. Yes, you're full of yourself. How about you? You're full? full of yourself. I'm full of myself, but you want me to only talk to you while you can talk to other guys. Oh my God, because you're having me out here looking stupid. Like, I actually I mean, look, look dumb. How do you look Like, how I do, look dumb. How do you look well, dumb yeah. when you have a boyfriend? Yeah. Does it make sense? Because you're DMing, like, multiple bitches. Okay. You're Snapchatting them, <laughs> telling them this, that, and the third. Uh, like, what the hell? Stop it right there, real quick. Like, I'm, I'm oh my God! Stop over. bringing him up. You're over here trying to gaslight me. <laughs> <All right. laughs> gaslighting me by telling me the truth. If you could tell when you look at that man's face. Oh yeah. He was expending zero fucks. Zero goose egg. Though no. I, I, he's he's willingly the side dude. <laughs> I, yep. I don't, I, dude. No pressure on him, I guess, until there is. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. He thought all the pressure was on her insides. Wrong! That's th listen, that is not a good place to be, no. being the male side piece. No, Just going to tell you that right now. Because, uh, I, I mean, most dudes, they find out what's going on. They're not going to hit the woman. They're going to oh. go after you. Yep. Pretty and all, you just wanted to get laid. So. Well, you know, I've seen some women get tuned up for that. I mean, this is an age of equality, right? Yeah. Equal rights, equal lefts. No, I remember, uh, like, it was what it, I was at the marina, and uh, a guy came to the boat, and his woman was banging another dude, <laughs> and uh, a fight ensued. Uh, the dude got throttled, and then she came out and was like, "Is that what it looks like?" <laughs> <laughs> 
right into the water. <laughs> and I was like, literally, I'm eating my eating. Like, I think it was fish and chips. I'm like, oh, good a show. <laughs> girl fight. <laughs> it wasn't a girl fight. There was not. There wasn't one to four titties. No four titty, exposed, yeah. no four titty fight. Yeah. I, that was a great story, though. Uh, that's actually gonna make a comedy routine out of that. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, I think I don't know if that one came out already or not, but the the last chief kick of the slap a whole nation. The story about the four titty fight night is going to be on the archive channel. You guys should definitely check it out. <laughs> now, I mean, I've seen girl fights when I was you know living in Oak Park. That was a yeah. very rough school district. Saw quite a few. And, they and never let go of the hair. They grab that hair. They never. Let I, go. I, I know they lock on like a pit bull. Yeah. But you know, in those fights, I mean, I didn't see a four titty fight, but I'm seeing a, like I think a two titty, a two titty fight. Two titties in there. Like literally, like hey, my, my Joe, my buddy Joe, Joey's standing next to me, like hey Joe, we're gonna <laughs> fight. He's like really, all right, well, get ready to see some titties. <laughs> Teenage <laughs> boys will figure out a way yes. to see titties always. <laughs> You're right. Just like I did when I was a kid. I was but like, oh, I, just, I, I can it, see the, the, the high dive area from underwater over here. This would be interesting. Oh, she's <laughs> got a string bikini on. All right. <gasps> Underneath. <laughs> Wait for the moment when she hits the water. Oh, oh no. I'm like. I used to do the same. Bubbles coming out of my mouth. <laughs> I used to do the same thing, <laughs> except that a scuba mask on. There you go. Less bubbles for you. Oh, this ought to be good. This is. Uh, Speaking of drowning, <laughs> why I'm telling my daughter to marry rich. Some might call me anti-feminist, but I wish my mother had instilled in me how crucial money and status are in a partner. Anyone who says wealth can't buy happiness is kidding themselves. Uh, uh, tell that to Robin Williams. That doesn't sound good at all. No. And not to mention the fact that she is, uh, she's... Very optimistic, ah. trying to marry off a five to a rich guy. Mm, yeah. I mean, you, you recon the mother. Mm -hmm. She's very masculine looking. She's got her nose. It's not going to go too well. <laughs> yeah, the mother's not super fat, and she doesn't have tentacle tits yet. But, but it, so. it's it's the masculine features of this yeah, face. You're, yeah, you're right. And it's, it's this go is south. following right on its heels. Yeah, it's going to You can go see south. it. Yeah. And not to mention the attitude, the entitlement. It's <clears throat> all coming down the pipe. Well, we did uh, the, the Bezos, Pimp Tart Wife Institute. Yeah. We did. Recon well, the Mother is, is I yeah. think, one of the best examples here. Listen, that's like one of the main lessons I try to teach young guys is if you're with a fine piece, you need to check out the mother. Always check out the mother. Because you can. I can guarantee you that the little. You know, DNA duplicate you're hanging out with <laughs> is going to wind up just like the mother. Yep. Anybody who sees this is automatically going to disqualify her daughter by yes. association because this is the relationship. Th this is the defining relationship in this girl's life. Yeah, but w She's women always want to marry some rich guy. I mean, that's of course. The way it works How out. many of them actually get to do that? Less than 1%. Not many. Not many. Yeah. I mean, oh, I want a guy that's over six feet and a six figure income. <laughs> oh, great. That's uh, that's less than 1% of men. How are you going to do that when every single one of your friends wants the same thing and they're all hotter than you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, how are you going to do that when your average is between four and six? Wah, <laughs> 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 wah. Uh, it's ridiculous. So her daughter's 17 and she's got her future mapped out with laser like precision. She even has a Pinterest account where she keeps vision boards of where she will marry. The upmarket spa hotel, Luton Hu, is the current favorite. She also has decided the names of the two children she plans to have, although she won't share them with me. Well, women do that all the time. Oh, yeah. And while she might not know her future husband's identity, she's certain of one thing the size of his bank balance. Lara is unabashed about her desire to marry a rich man and far from bristling at what might, some might consider a deeply, depressingly retrograde goal, I am right behind her. <laughs> sure, honey. Yeah, sure. sure, sure. You know who else is going to be behind her? Are they in England? It uh, looks like an English house ish. or manor or something. Uh, not really seeing stately home, pristine black VW Beetle. It's not really saying. Okay. Oh, Lapland at Christmas, Florida in the uh. summer, regular foreign holidays, but that's not where she lives now. Okay. 
Because that looks somewhat, that looks Englishy. Oh, no, this is the Luton Who Hotel where she wants to get married. It looks like Wayne Manor. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling her to sit back and forget about her education. Well, then wouldn't it be useless? That's right. If all she wants to do is marry rich, why would you put her in debt just so she can marry rich? Well, I, to, to be honest, um, that woman needs a backup plan. <laughs> a little bit. The primary plan is probably not going to work. Yeah, she needs a backup plan just like she's got a backup boyfriend that fits in the dishwasher. And listen, uh, I know a few rich guys, and and they're married, and their wives are very humble. You know, they weren't. They're not flamboyant, and they don't like to spend a lot of money. And good, they do okay. Excellent. The ones that I knew that were rich and had wives who were not like that are now divorced. There you go. And when you're aiming this high, when yeah. you have no life experience, I can't imagine how that could possibly go south. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> what could go wrong? Teenagers never make poor decisions. Yeah. That's why we're allowing them to chop their shit off when they're 12. <laughs> oh, my God. But we're not going to let them get married in Michigan, but we'll let them cut their shit off just because they want to and a psychiatrist says that they're allowed to after one meeting. Yeah. Uh, fuck this planet. I want off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is London. Yeah, she has her sights set I on Oxbridge. Would like to study classics before converting to law. Then she plans to work for one of the Magic Circle London law firms. Sure, that sounds like that sounds like a better plan. Become a lawyer. Yeah, it I really mean, does. Because because if she's as masculine as her mother, then she's not going to get married. Well, here's the other thing: if she becomes a lawyer, she's actually going to be around men who are rich. Yeah, you got to be around the target to capture it. Agreed. You know, if you're just like hanging out, you know, on the regular streets of London eating chips, fish and chips, <laughs> good luck. Good luck with that. Yeah. You you might get some tartar sauce from somebody walking by or something like that, but that's about it. I hope it's just the fish and not the chips. What would the chips be in this euphemistic scenario? It sounds disgusting. <laughs> yeah, let us know in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> chips. Chip off the old Amy Wharton block. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and this, this is a Ugh. this is like a modified tale as old as time. Oh yeah, I want to marry rich yeah. because there's so many rich guys to choose from. Yeah, right. Uh, less now than ever before. So she goes as far as to say that she might like to marry the boss. Some might recoil, but why not aim high? I support her one hundred percent. All right. Now this is now, just my on. opinion. All right, give give us your opinion. Just my opinion. But there's a reason why. Single moms, and there's not a single father mentioned in this piece. Correct. There's a reason single mothers want to set their children up for failure. And it's because they don't know how to exist without them. So they or, turn them into feckless babies who can never go out on their own. And they, say, they, they give them these grandois plans and say, you can go out and do it all, but I'll be here for you as a backup if anything were to happen. Well, it kind of sounds like a misery likes company situation. That too. All right. Now, listen, this, this same plot plays out across, I've seen it on many books and stories and movies. Oh, yeah. About the mother preening the child to like marry like, way above her station. I mean, there's hundreds, if not millions of stories out there about this throughout throughout the past 200 years. Yeah. And Who the hell is that? Stops. Uh, oh, it's a Pride and Prejudice actor. They're, they're mentioning ah. the story of Pride and Prejudice, marrying the older rich man, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Mr. Darcy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, well, go ahead. You know, just set her up for failure. See what happens. What could go wrong? Yeah. The thing is, the more her daughter achieves, the higher she's going to aim, and her aims are already beyond delusional. Mm. Yeah. So it's it's not going to work out. All I say is good luck. Best that you can hope for is marrying a stupid athlete and then starting an OnlyFans. I, listen, <laughs> when I read this, I. I I read the story, but I heard, you know, I watched it on YouTube a couple of days ago. That dude's got to be absolutely humiliated. I, I mean, I, I, wow. Just think how humiliating that is. I know. 
Joe Smith, number one overall pick in 1995, went viral during the week as he learned that his wife, Kisha Chavez, was on OnlyFans. Ch Chavez or Chavis filmed Smith's reaction as the former top selection was brooding over the revelation. Easy enough to just play it. So this... Oh, yeah, here we go. <sighs> Just now, just why perfectly is he legitimate not question. The fuck out? Perfectly legitimate question. Who the fuck would pay to see that naked? I would pay to keep her clothes on. Well, and this also, dude isn't a spring chicken anymore. He was a he was a star athlete like almost in, thirty years in ago. Ninety five. So this woman's got to be in her fifties. So he's long since been retired. Yeah. Right? All right, and and look how calm he is about this whole thing. Yeah, I, I would, and, and I'd have her, to leave the house. Look at her face. She's got this. I know I'm right. I'm completely tuning you out. I'm taping this because I'm obviously correct. I'm empowered. I'm strong, independent. And is, he, is he divorcing her? He better. Wait. Wait, no, 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 calm, but you're not going to say fuck me, or that's fucked up. It's not it's fucked up. It is fucked up. Yeah. Yes, it is. She's, what, 50? Yep. It's not fucked up. Look at up. that neck! And yep. we're going to, okay, look, so. She's I talking to the camera. I have an OnlyFans page, and he's mad because he's just now finding out about it. Of course I'm mad when you just find out about it. I'm not doing it with anybody but why myself, so I'm just you my choice, my body, my, my body, my fucking don't choice. Don't be your I'm your partner. You're supposed to come to me and talk to Joe, me. Joe, I've been talking to you That's about right. mad things. I've been asking for solutions to shit. You're not giving me none, so I created one. That's no solution. Not in my book. All right, he needs to cut that bitch away. Yep. Well, think about it. ASAP. Think about it. Relate this back to the prior story. Even when these bitches get what they want, this woman happy. is tied one on with a millionaire athlete. Yeah, She's never going to have happy. to do jack shit. It's still not enough. That's she right. still wants the attention, the validation, of the, and the money of, from other men. You are 100% correct. I literally can't even find... I mean, look at... Uh, she, and she's not... Attractive. No, she listen, her clit <laughs> is growing up her chest and it's hanging <laughs> off her neck. You what was that see term? It. What was that term that Jimmy told me earlier? I about choked on my fucking spit. <laughs> what what I call steak drapes. <laughs> I gotta write that down. When you realize he's only been smashing your back doors in because your steak drapes look like an exit wound from a 44 Magnum. <laughs> And that's that face right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And, and then she films Ugh. this. Yeah. Talking to him. He puts it on the internet. He needs to get rid of her. Bye-bye. Done. Get rid of Oh, my God. That's so disrespectful. I, I mean, think about it. Women will claim that you texting another woman could be completely platonic and not telling them about it is a form of emotional cheating. Correct. Then what's an OnlyFans? Uh, yeah, you're right. They're they're cheating for attention. Yep. He needs he needs to get rid of this bitch. Oh my god. <laughs> I hope to God he divorces. Uh, modern women are a complete fucking train wreck. And I know. this next one here is one of the best examples I can think of of women making an utter ass out of themselves. And they will continue to do it as long as attention is provided. This TikToker is slowly oh taking her own life. Oh Eugenia God. Cooney is a 29-year-old mega influencer who got her start on YouTube in 2011. Since then, she has built a massive skeleton. following, but yep. while doing so, has allegedly suffered from a serious ED, which results in her looking very frail and weak on camera. And while she's always gotten concerned comments from fans urging her to seek professional help, things only seem to be getting worse for Eugenia. She recently posted a TikTok dancing to a popular song, which quickly went viral and caused oh, an uproar in the comment sticking. section oh as people God. are saying enough is enough. With many stating things like, I Oh my god! Today, as well as we're just counting down the days at this point. In fact, even her own she's mom gonna has vouched for she's her, gonna saying die. that she's doing just fine. How is your your mom okay oh. watching you built away? She's not. My mom lives with me. She knows that I'm fine. Know, Did her she, mom steal all her fat? Oh my so god. No. Oh. That woman needs to eat some sandwiches. Something. Damn. Oh my god. Ugh. She's she's starving herself to death for attention. She can man all the glory holes in oh Germany. At least then she would get some sugar and some calories. Holy crap.
Ugh. I mean, I guess it solves two two problems. <laughs> I guess so. One, you know, one bird, two stone. Or two birds, one stone. Woo! Quite, quite nasty. Oh my lord, Ugh. dude! All right, now but, listen. I, uh, I literally am not attracted to like uber skinny women. No, I just am not. Even healthy looking skinny women are not as much fun. If you know what I mean, I mean you can do like the the, the flapper, you know the, the 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 spinner thing, you know. But sometimes like the 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 hip bones, yeah, they just I've I've been bruised before. Yeah, listen, it's not fun. But you, you got to be careful because when you get older, and you try to turn this, you know, you substitute the uh, spinner for a flapper. Oh yeah, you throw you, your back you're out. You're gonna like hurt Mr. your back. Incredible. I had a former commander, <laughs> like. I, I remember going in there and he's got like this heating pad and he's bent over and like, what's wrong with you? He's oh, starting to pop my back. This is killing me. I'm like, well, sir, you, you treated a flapper like a spinner. That's what you get. He's just like, go to your office. Just just go to your office. <laughs> 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 I used to do his expense reports. Oh. I, I remember I'm like, okay, $151, Hotel Chicago. All right. now I'm like, are there orders for that? Like, oh, no, no. Okay, he's using his government credit card. To, all right, this is a lop expense. Jail. Lack of pussy. Lack of yep. pussy. And I put it in front of him. He goes, what is, hey, Sergeant Pop, what does this lop mean? I'm like, sir, those are expenses that can't be covered. Uh, you have to pay them with your own <laughs> pocket. Well, what does lop stand for? These are charges for lack of pussy. My advice is get a piece of ass closer to home so you have to drive all the way to fucking Chicago. Yep. What do you, what's wrong with you? Chai Congo. <laughs> I mean, he had like, you know, five, six thousand dollars on his credit card. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, man. And, and just to take things back to just the last three things that we covered that skinny chick. Okay. Yep. You notice we saw her mom, just her mom. Yep. The uh, ex NBA player's wife. 75% chance born out of wedlock. Mm. And the daughter who wants to pimp out, the, the mom who wants to pimp out her daughter to a rich dude. Ah. Clearly no father in the picture. Nope. Do we see a pattern here? Well, uh, we've been saying this for years. We've provided the stats. We've shown the articles and the studies. But somehow they just don't seem to understand that people develop better when there's a mother and a father in the home on a permanent basis. Damn right. And even single father homes have almost an identical outcome to two parent homes because single fathers are not stupid enough to think, I can do it all myself. Well, there's that and the fact that men are exceedingly good at teaching children how to exist in the real world. Because we deal with facts, logic, and reason. Yeah. We can face reality on its own terms. We don't try to change it or police anybody else's language to protect our feelings so that we can embrace an unreality. Yeah, and we know no one's coming to our rescue, and we actually convey that lesson into our children. Yep. You need to be self-sufficient. No one's going to come to your rescue. I mean, I'll come and rescue you, but, you know, I'm going to die at some point, so you're going to figure this shit out. Yeah. I mean, that's how it works. Ugh. So, we got one chick who wants to marry Rich, mm. one chick who did and still ain't happy. We got another story from the Rusty Bad Wrench. Oh, uh, here we go. Or the Rusty Trombone, as I call him. Uh. Uh, one of the stories didn't really tie in, so I'm taking one of the two here, but it, this is quite... Fitting and quite disgusting. I went to the bar after hockey with my high school buddy that we call Hollywood because he does crazy shit. Uh. At some point in the evening, a bachelorette party came into the bar that had a bride, bride's mom, and the groom's mom. Those are the only important people to this story. They were already well on their way to being shit-faced drunk. Hollywood's brother was there with two of his co-workers. Uh. Excuse me. We started socializing with the group of women and proceeded to help get the bride blitzed. Mm. That's when the fun started. One of the guys that we played hockey with got there. We branded him Wild Bill Cockblock. Mm. Dude was married and would purposely interfere with those of us that were single every time we laid our game on a woman. Case in point. On a trip to Toronto for a hockey tournament, Hollywood had some chick talking to, talked into letting him do her in the butt gina. <laughs> <laughs> oh and Wild God. Bill Cockblock screwed it up for him. 
Ah. The cock block bill decided to start groping the bride, and as an FYI, it was very consensual. Mm. She was yelled at by that point several times to stop standing on chairs and stripping. Her mom, for some reason, would yell at Hollywood every time Bill would feel her up. It got to the point that Bill had his hand down the front of her pants, diddling her, at which point her mom tried to slap Hollywood. Huh? How does that even make any sense? I have no idea. I'm going to slap the other guy, not the guy who's diddling my daughter's bean. <laughs> and, and this is like before a wedding? Is this like a bachelorette party? Bachelorette party, party yep. Yelling at him to stop while Bill was sitting in between them, finger-banging the bride in front of her mom. But wait, uh, there's, there's more. more. We made amends by hooking up mom and the groom's mother with the two co-workers that Hollywood's brother brought. I know for sure that the groom's mom got banged out in someone's SUV that was parked on the street right by the side door to the what bar. What kind of fucking debauchery is this? I know. I How saw the hell is this marriage ever going to last? It will not. It will not. I saw bouncing ass with my own eyes. <laughs> I have suspicion that the bride's mom got piped too, but I'm not sure. This kind of thing was a regular occurrence when I'd be out anywhere, not just the bar. Wow. Wow. Can you imagine working in a bar on a regular basis where they have, like, bachelorette parties on the regular and all of the stupid, crazy shit that happens? I've seen it myself. Wow. Mm. He says here, I'll leave you with one more. My sadly departed friend Dave and I were at the bar one night, absolutely blitzed. We were at the bar fly. At the end of the bar, I stepped away for a second to chat with someone leaving Dave unsupervised. <laughs> I caught the barmaid running across the bar out of the corner of my eye yelling, I didn't get to see it! I looked over at Dave, and the barflies were all cooing over his wang that was hanging out of his <laughs> pants. As I walk over, he laid it on the bar, and the barmaid told him, I got off at 11. Wait for me. Oh, my God. I walked up to Dave and said, what the fuck, dude? Dave's response was, ah, fuck them. They'll either suck it or sue you, and I ain't been sued yet. <laughs> <laughs> I need to hear more about this Dave person. <laughs> now, unfortunately, he passed away, right? Uh, no, I don't know. It doesn't say. Uh, one day when I have the time, I'll write to you uh, the Dave Odyssey. The Dave stories get wild. Oh, yeah. Dave did stuff like get into an argument with his brother who came over to whip Dave's ass, which caused Dave to beat his brother in the head with a hammer, but don't worry. What is it with the sibling rivalry on this show lately? Shit. I don't know. Dave was on his brother before he could completely get off his motorcycle, and Dave's brother was wearing a full face helmet. Okay. Okay. All right. No concussions necessary for that story. I don't know, man. Uh, Damn. I just can't imagine, like, having that kind of anger towards your own brother to, like, hit him with a weapon or some shit. I mean, we talked to, what was it, Thumper? Was yeah. telling us that his fucking <laughs> brother tried to murder him several yeah. times Jesus when he was, Christ. like, three? Yeah, that's insane. Wow. Hmm. What a nut roll we live in, man. Uh, so you see, these all kind of tie together in my own twisted little way. I go through and I find things, you know, so you got the mama wants to pimp her daughter. Uh -huh. The woman who's already married trying to pimp herself. We got the bride who's not married yet getting fiddled in the bar. And both of her ho both whore moms on both sides going out and getting banged by randos probably still married themselves. Yeah. And there's actually a couple channels wow. on YouTube where people read the Reddit stories. Yes. And, uh, strong, successful male. He's, a well, good yeah, he's one of them. But I, I watch a couple of these where like dudes find out that they're soon-to-be brides were doing all of this nasty, raunchy shit before them. And literally, they're like, we're yep. not getting married. We're done. And then everyone's like ah. at, mad at the dude. He's like, what the fuck do you want me to do about it? She had a train yeah. run on her. Ah, fuck that. <laughs> like, Get out of here. You know, back in the Oregon Trail days, they'd run a wagon on her. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'll die of scurvy when you're done. <laughs> scurvy? <laughs> Oh, oh my lord. It gets even worse. Bad. Yeah. Oh, no. If you can believe that, of all the stories that we have for tonight, this one has to be the worst. It is because somebody died. North Dakota woman fatally poisons boyfriend hours after he inherited $30 million. All right, all right hang on here. All right, in today's day Ooh. and age, poison is easily detectable. Yes. 
and in this case, she tried to she made him drink antifreeze. That's well. Number one, that is an absolute horrific way to die. Yeah, and you can easily uh, drink antifreeze in any sugar beverage because you won't. You're probably not going to taste it. Yeah, yeah. Well, isn't that what the the mom in the sixth sense used to poison her kid? I don't remember. That's what it looked like. Some kind of cleaner or antifreeze, something like that. No, and, well, antifreeze, once you once you get enough of it, it is ter- 100% terminal. Yeah. I have a hard time watching that movie now that I'm a dad. Yeah, I know. Because that scene in particular, I'm like, oh, that woman wouldn't live through the night. <laughs> uh, you no, know, she, she would not make it to uh, do the perp walk down the front steps. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if Shyamalan decided to cut away from the scene where the dad throttles that woman into oblivion. And just come down with a uh, shotgun and saw her in half. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom. I guess we're celebrating two funerals here today. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! North Dakota woman fatally poisoned her boyfriend after learning about his plans to dump her because he had inherited $30 million just hours before. Inathea, or Inathea Kenoyer, 47, was charged Monday with the September 5th murder of Stephen Edward Riley Jr., 51, a gruesome act that cops said was driven by financial motives. Yep. Wow. This case was extremely complex, said Investigations Commander Captain they Dale They always Pleasance. say that. Of course. I mean, how, what's so complex about the fact that she poisoned him? What a bitch. I don't know. All right. Riley became ill when he met with his lawyer September 3rd to collect the massive inheritance sum, witnesses told investigators. Kenoyer didn't call 911 until the next day when paramedics arrived to find Riley unresponsive in his home. He died in the hospital the following day. Wow. Autopsy determined he was killed after ingesting antifreeze, which police allege Kenoyer fed him. Accused killer proclaimed her innocence in a series of nonsensical Facebook posts in the days leading up to her arrest. Claiming Riley had killed himself oh. after making thirty million dollars, I'm just gonna well, that this is as good as it's gonna get. Goodbye, cruel right, world. Hang on, hang on. Fuck that. That's her. She's a forty. Holy shit! Forty-seven. She looks more like sixty-seven. All right. For okay, hang on. So if you lose one look point per seven years, and she's forty-seven, she's like a two and a half. Yeah, she's like a solid one point five to two. <laughs> Holy crap! Wow. Pop gives everybody a four. No, this, not this, this is, one. This is bad, right? No, this is bad. This is bad. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Kanoyer told investigators she planned to split Riley's astounding inheritance, which she estimated to be around $30 million, with his son. The records state she claimed she was entitled to the fortune as his common-law wife. North Dakota, however, does not recognize such relations. Ha! 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 <laughs> Additionally, Riley had revealed plans to break off the romance shortly after receiving the massive sum, leading investigators to theorize she poisoned him to secure the treasure. Well, well she should have looked up all, the laws first. All right, so he gets thirty million bucks. Yeah. All right. Why would he want to remain with that haggard piece of haggis? I wouldn't. And if, when you could, because listen, uh, there will be thirty-year-old women you know, like knocking the door down to yeah. get with that guy, it, even though he looks rough himself yeah but you know women like money that's the way it is oh he can get me a new iphone 15 take me daddy (laughs) (laughs) just let me just let me selfie it over your shoulder so i can show the world how disappointed i am in myself (laughs) not that i've ever seen women do that oh yeah uh, rest in peace, Dad. I had a feeling it was her with how everything played out, but fuck, I wish we had made plans to see each other sooner, Riley's grieving son wrote on Facebook. Wow. I hope she gets what she deserves for taking you from this world. She faces double-A felony murder, the most severe murder charge in North Dakota. Does that have a death penalty? I don't know. She's now being held without bond at the Warren Ca- Ward County Detention Center and is representing herself, court records she, show. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to work out. Good luck with that. Like, go back up. Look at that neck on that. God damn. That her her clit ugly. neck? She's got a clit neck there. Look at that neck and that nose. Ah. And it's, it's, I mean, she can smell the coffee in Brazil when she. God damn, that's an ugly woman, man. 
Last week, a poison specialist and former doctor at the famed Mayo Clinic was charged with poisoning his wife amid marital difficulties, allegedly trying to have her body cremated immediately while planning to cash in on a $500,000 life insurance policy. Mm. And another one in Utah, mother Corey Richens is still waiting for trial for allegedly slipping her husband a deadly fentanyl-laced Moscow mule Ooh. the day before cashing in on a $2 million mansion she hoped to flip that he refused to pay for. Wow. So here's the bottom line. They want your money. Uh -huh. Even after they get you money, it's not going to be enough, and the disrespect will commence. And if they find out that you're going to come into money, they'll, they'll kill, kill you for they'll it. They'll kill you for it. <laughs> Meth and dicks. <laughs> Meth and dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Ah, ah. Is this a thought Thursday, oh, yes, or is this is. a thought this Thursday? This is one for the ages, man. Woo! Good one. <laughs> First of all, that woman is just hideously ugly. I yes, I literally have a lump of vomit in my throat, and I could do. I mean, for you to give somebody a one point five, yeah, this uh, that's you got listen. That, I mean, you gave the screaming abortion chick a four. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. Listen, uh, welcome to Redondo. Maybe they look uglier in the in the rearview mirror. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they look ugly. Objects in the mirror may be uglier than they appear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, what a fucking nut roll, man. <laughs> That's life for you. Now listen, if you ever been with a woman and you're and you're like later on, you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? You're <laughs> rear view looking, man. Because shit looks better in the rear view mirror. It really does. <laughs> Uh, but with all that being said, before we get to the last story of the night, which has come, it comes from you guys in the chat. Uh, we got some. We got so We have to depop the world. Apparently, there's a guy out there who likes to depop spelling errors and weird grammatical shit that just happens to pop up in the world. No pun intended. And I thought. This uh, kind of fits with our illustrious host quite well. <laughs> Jalapenas chicken poop. <laughs> Can we go through some of these misspelled labels, please? Pot seven. I'm just going to ride this wave. Jalapenas chicken poopers? 100% anus beef. What is anus beef? You got problems with my butthole? Rachel Ray finds inspiration in cooking her family and dog. <laughs> You and your bestie just got an apartment in Selfie? I could see this hanging up in the kitchen. Belst. <laughs> Please pay your parking fee before existing. I pay, therefore I am. A wise man once said, there is just no winning in this life. I accept the feat. <laughs> Students get first hand job experience. Oh, I remember mine. Her name was Megan. Tom Brady was winning a Super Bowl. Imagine that's your first handy. Brady's winning a Super Bowl in the background. Let's go. When I saw you, I was taking a bath. You what? I was taking a bath when I first saw you. Like I was stunned by your beauty. <laughs> Do you mean taking a bath? Yeah. Attention, this toilet's only for disabled, elderly, pregnant children. <laughs> in today's day and age, there'll still be a friggin' line. Yeah, can I get a bagel with cheam creams? Cheam creams. Yeah, with cheam creams. On the side? I bet you can get cheam creams at the German glory hole. I come clean for you, house kipping. House kipping. Come clean. <laughs> cheam creams? I want some cheam creams at the German glory hole. Put some the penis in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was funny. Wow. Uh, this is why you guys tune in, man. <laughs> uh, we got the ultimate, ultimate story to wrap this up with tonight, not including your super chats, of course. All right. It's called The Dodged Bullet. Oh. And it comes to us from a gentleman who watches <sighs> the show named David. I had ended up stumbling into MGTOW thoughts pretty young before I ever heard of it. This was largely due to my first girlfriend who was abusive, cheated on me with at least five other guys, and was just trying to get pregnant for similar reasons to what my mother did. Oh, oh no. That's why you picked her. Yep. And you're going to pick women just like that until you recognize that that's your normal. This relationship didn't last long, not even a year. There isn't really much to say about it beyond what I saw my dad go through, and this relationship made me suspicious about ever getting married or having children. The cheating and her plan I didn't find out about until years later after we had broken up. Unsurprisingly, 
Last I heard, she moved to a welfare-heavy state and became a fat single mother. So she moved to Michigan. <laughs> One could likely argue that this is a dodged bullet as well, and they're probably right. In retrospect, I should have dropped her long before I did, but I was also a dipshit 18-year-old who didn't know any better yet. The real dodged bullet was my last girlfriend. When we first started seeing each other and we were discussing getting together, long-term marriage was discussed. By then, I had long since decided no marriage ever, thanks to what was mentioned above. I explained why to her, and her only response was, Yeah, that makes sense. I understand. Uh Uh-huh. I wasn't against planning on staying with somebody for life. There's just no way I was signing that piece of paper. Knowing what happens in divorce court has ensured that there is absolutely no way I will risk it. Nothing will ever change my mind. Good. This, I think, is how all men should be right now, given how horrid things are. That's what I. That's why we do the show, man. Overall, though, in her case, when I met her, she was a joy to be around, and the sex was regular enough for my tastes. That's the way it always begins. Yep. We bonded over a lot of mutual interests, and unlike most Americans, she made a point of not getting fat. Great looking, too. Mm. She was financially responsible at the time. And overall, holy shit, I got lucky on this one. I'll never let go territory. She's she good people. She loves oh, me. She, she, she different. She loves I've me. I've heard it all, man. I've heard it all. Problem was... She eventually started hanging her out with toxic feminists. There you go. It's a done deal. Done and done. At one point after we had lived together for a while, she said she knew my views on marriage, but really did want to spend her life with me. She asked if we could live together as if we were husband and wife without actually being married. Things were still fine at this point, and I did genuinely want to stay with her, so I agreed. Uh... The state we lived in at the time at one point had common law marriage. Stick in a pin that stick a pin in that as it will become important later. All right. The key word there is had. The law had been repealed long before all this went down, and I knew that. That was when things started to go downhill. As soon as I agreed, it was like a switch flipped. The sex became less frequent, and she put continually less effort into it. She became increasingly hostile and uncooperative. Her demands increased while what she offered decreased. Nothing I ever did was good enough toward the end of things. The things I used to cook for her that she clearly enjoyed suddenly were insulting. We started living together. We were stuck living together as we had a lease signed, so it wasn't like we could just easily separate either. Despite that, she would declare that we were over, but then complain that I started treating her differently. <laughs> what the fuck do you want? My response was simply, if you want girlfriend-level treatment from me, you have to be my girlfriend. If we break up, we're just roommates, and I have no responsibility to you beyond my half of the expenses. Nice. For better or for worse, I'm extremely no-nonsense. Sometimes she would go back to being my girlfriend, but other times she was trying to figure out how to get girlfriend priority without being my girlfriend. Yeah. Sounds like my horse chick. Yes. Same I'll admit thing that with I, my horse chick, too. Yeah. They, they love to pull this shit because what they really want is somebody to finance their lifestyle so they can spend time with their horse cock. I mean horse. That's absolutely Sorry. correct. Bitches. <clears throat> I'll admit that I put up with this crap way longer than I should have, but part of that was attempting to steer her out of that dark path. I did, of course, care about her. I didn't want to see her burn her life down like happens to so many women who go that way. I also could tell that she was conflicted over the entire thing as there were times that I saw her coming back from the edge. Unfortunately, it failed in the long run, and she eventually took a screaming leap off the cliff and became unrecoverable. Live and learn, I guess. Yep. Obviously, eventually jettisoning, jettisoning her from my life and not having children with her are dodged bullets in and of themselves, but recall that I did mention common law marriage. Oh, my God. I think most states at some point had a common law marriage law, but they have largely been repealed. This isn't even a particularly recent thing, and those that do exist are increasingly not enforced, as far as I know. I'm neither a lawyer nor a legal expert, so I can't talk specifics. Be that as it may, the state we lived in is one of the ones where common law marriage had long since been repealed. She did all the things that women do when setting up a nasty divorce. She would refuse to answer the phone at a time we agreed to talk about something we had to sort out, and then claim it was harassment when I called her more than once. I still had some belongings left in the apartment we had previously shared, but arranging to get them became a nightmare. She started sending, I don't feel safe around you, texts, and telling people that that I'd become abusive. That's very common. That's like the first act in their uh, self-destruction in themselves and you. (sighs) The worst I had ever done to her were two times I yelled. 
In both cases, she deliberately graded on my nerves until I finally raised my voice. She immediately stopped the grading and smiled, then later declared me to be verbally abusive. Oh, my God. This was a common pattern in the last couple of weeks. She would pick stupid fights over petty things and try to make me lose my temper. I'd just walk away from it as I knew what she was up to. That's act number two. Yep. Knowing what I know, I knew what was going on, so I cleared out the last of my belongings in one go, and when it was finally arranged, and that was that. The dodged bullet is, of course, that even though she went through all that effort to lay the groundwork for a vicious divorce, there was no marriage to end. <laughs> the state by that point had no common law marriage, so there was no marriage to destroy for profit. Along the way, since I know how these things play out, I knew what she was doing and deliberately failed to give her the ammunition she needed once I figured out what was going on. Hmm. I don't know if she ended up incurring any legal costs, but nothing legal ever came my way, so I'm assuming that her lawyer realized that we weren't actually married, so there was no divorce to be had. She did all the things that lawyers tell women to do, so there was either one involved or other women who know about such things. Mm. She made all kinds of wild accusations, but unsurprisingly, never went to the police. Yep. Uh, he continues, before she started setting that up, there was some on-again, off-again stuff in that retrospect. I shouldn't have put up with it. One reason I attempted to salvage things was because I realized there was no way I was attempting another relationship after the fact. Turns out I was right. I haven't even been on a date since all this happened. Hmm. This is something that I've noticed women who do this just don't think about. They think it just happens in a vacuum, but every time one does this sort of thing, there is a high probability she creates another man who just says, I'm done. No come, thanks. Come on to redonkulous. The same, come on to redonkulous. Yeah. The same pool of men they're mistreating is the same pool of men they're trying to get with later. The custody battle and divorce crap is also similar. The boys who grow up seeing this eventually grow up to become men and think, I don't want that. Meanwhile, women who are not on this path but get convinced to go down it are obliterating happy, functional relationships between people who care about each other over money. Mm. Maybe I'm too sentimental about such things, but I don't think there's any amount of money worth that. I'm atypically agreeable, so I detest being single, but these days things are so bad being in a relationship is worse than being alone. It's been yes. almost... yeah. It's been almost six years since all this went down. Now, whenever a woman tries to flirt with me, I aggressively ignore it. Men need to hear about this kind of story in particular, as even if you think you got a good one who won't betray you, there's always the possibility that she'll get twisted by hanging out with other women. Mm, correct. You don't even necessarily need to be married for a woman to try and extract as much as possible from you once she becomes this type. There's a turd in the punch bowl, as Aaron Clary likes to say. <laughs> as much as I badly miss who she was before she caught toxic feminism, this is a level of betrayal that's impossible to come back from. If I ever see her again, I'm probably going to say thanks for proving me right and leave it at that. No, you don't say anything other than pass. Yeah, pass. Because yeah. she will sling back. That's right. It's been about six years. You're coming up on it. That's right. The fact that this behavior is currently socially acceptable makes me want to spend the rest of my life alone. Women need to hear this kind of story so they know what the fallout ends up being. These things never happen purely in a vacuum, and the pool of men who are interested in relationships is shrinking. So yeah, this wasn't directly a marriage story, but it's more of an attempted marriage and divorce story. Sometimes you don't even need to be married for a woman to try to drag you into divorce court. All right, now, that, that was a really good story. Yeah. But I have heard the exact same thing unfold Hundreds of times throughout my time in the military. Oh, yeah. And it usually, it always starts with the accusations. I can't tell you how many times. I'm literally at the company CP. There's the first sergeant. There's the commander. <laughs> the phone rings. They pick it up. What? He did uh -huh. what? Oh, my God. And I can see them both put on their white night, you know, attire. They're going <laughs> to ride out there and fuck this dude up. And I'm like... Hey, wait a minute here. You, you understand this is this is like chick 101, right? Have the police actually been called? Is there any medical bills? <laughs> is there any proof at all to this? Negative, sergeant. It, is what what's that for, sir? No, okay. All right. So if you guys want to do this right off and, and fuck this dude up cuz he got a phone call, you're going to get fucked up down the road cuz it's called undue command influence. There you go. There's no proof. All right. And now, if the cops called and said, hey, you know, you know, specialist such and such tuned up his wife, yeah, okay, then there's that's called proof. Yeah. 
And without proof, and you take action, you're fucking yourself. So how about we just dial it back from 10 to like 6, and we just ask some fucking questions? <laughs> it's just that simple. <laughs> it is. I, I've done that dozens of times. Like, what, sir, what are you doing? What? You want, What? No. You realize? <laughs> you realize you're... you're you're throwing the boomerang cock block at yourself because this is going to blow up in your face. Oh! Uh, uh, it's my job to make sure you get a good OER. And right now, if this blows up, you're going to get fucked up. Did, you're going to get fucked. Yeah, I've done that so many times. <laughs> man, military stories never get old. Man. And then the fight picking. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you have not seen clowns and bottles. And oh! <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> and I had been in the army like six fucking months. And that like, was it? Yeah. I'm like, this is going to be good. <laughs> I got another 20 years of this. It's going to be so exciting. Another 32 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it worked out. <laughs> oh, man. That was good stuff right there. Oh, right. Apparently I've seen it all, man. I've seen it all. Apparently, we're getting some buffering over on YouTube. I'm just double-checking signal to make sure that we're all set over there. Looks like we are. Yeah. Um, might be some something going on with the restream there. I just did a reload over there. A live feed apparently is still excellent, so I want to make sure that we're all good. I did a speed test before you came in. We were doing good. All right. Current bit rate, uh, that's not what is being transmitted. So YouTube might be kind of screwing with us right now. Might be. Uh, check us out over on Rumble, dudes. Jimmy Bones, if you can slap those, uh, yeah. slap those... And their latency is getting low in Rumble. Okay, so yeah, just give it a refresh everywhere you're at, guys, and see what happens there because it looks like it's not an issue over on our end. I'm just checking out Restream right now. Stream is very stable. It's stable on our end, too. It looks like we had a little bit of a frame drop in there, but that was about it. Hmm. <sighs> it is what it is. Uh, what are you yeah, do? We got 430 dropped frames in over an hour, so eh, that's not terrible. Bad. That's still, is it what? Not even five minutes worth. So. Yeah. All right. We're going to read some chats. We got some chats here. We got one more video, too. So you mentioned military, so we got to watch this one. All right. Now, before we start, <laughs> uh, I just, I just want to point out the obvious. You have a basic trainee behind an actual weapon with live ammunition. Dun, dun, All dun. Right. Now, I know for a fact that there is no fucking way a trainee is going to get behind a fucking live rifle on a range without a goddamn helmet. <laughs> you know, I mean, I would fucking, I literally, I've, I can't tell many times I've been in the safety tower like, Shh. hey, lane four. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, rocket scientist, put your fucking helmet on. <laughs> yeah. So you think this might be staged? I think it's staged. Well, let's check it out. All it's right. still funny. It is funny. I don't know why your weapon's not shooting. Why would it not be shooting, Private? Maybe because you have run out of ammo. Maybe because you have finished all of the rounds inside your magazine. Ow! <laughs> so now you can no longer shoot because you have no more ammo. Oh, did this happen? You saw it? You shot it all, Private! <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, listen. Well, you shut it all, bro. And, and this, this is a drill sergeant situation. Oh, oh man. I, I, I think it's staged because okay. they would, you have to have a helmet on. Yeah. Okay. Looks like we may have. I'm going to do a re. Yeah, the live stream over on MGTOW disconnected for some reason. Oh, oh shit. shit sticks. Um, yeah, I don't know what the heck is going on here. Uh, are we having a storm here? No. No, I'm not sure what the heck is going on. Right. Uh, it's still transmitting to MGTOW, so I'm not sure why it says that it's... Uh, and now it says live for three minutes and some odd seconds. So, God damn is it. Is this working? Oh, what the hell? Yeah, um, I don't know. Maybe we did have like a slight disconnection over on Restream for a little bit. Because, yeah, over on Restream, it's saying that we've only been live for two minutes and 50 seconds. Oh. So we must have had a complete drop at some point for some reason. From Restream? Yeah. Not right. sure what. Do a speed test. Or maybe it happened here when we did our drop frames thing. I don't know. Yeah, do, can you do a quick speed test? Uh, while we're, oh, no, it won't no, be accurate no. while we're transmitting. Yeah, you're right. You're right. 
Weird night. Uh, well, now we're back to excellent connections, so we should be okay everywhere. Who knows? I'm not sure what the hell happened. Big Tao, shit in the bed. Not really happy about that, but it looks like we're back up at the same location. So okay, give it a check, guys. It's definitely there and it's working. Rumble should be back up and working too. We're up over 600 on Rumble. All right. Outstanding. YouTube is already starting to jump ship. We got Sharpshooter James over there. Uh, says, spooky, scary skeletons send shivers down your spine. <laughs> Shrieking skulls will shock your soul. Seal your doom tonight. Uh, uh, doom. <laughs> doom. And Sean St. George, after listening to all these stories, women really ask, where are all the good men? And why we won't commit or go our own way. Yep. Well, what are you going to do? It is what it is. All right, that is all the YouTube chats. Two. Wow. That's it. That's all we got, huh? It's 9.16, so it's perfect. We're going to take a break. We're going to put on some Jeffrey Paul tunes for you guys. I'm going to switch the music, though. We've been listening to the same music now for the past few All right. Switch it up. We'll go back to version number three. Why the hell not? Do it. Uh, That's good stuff. But, Jimmy Bones, if you could help me out, paste those links in the chat. Hang on, we'll switch that up. There, that's much better. And we will see you over on New Tech. We got some more stories, more funny videos. Trust me, they're definitely worth the so time. In and Out Burger <laughs> and the woman that wants the In and Out. Yeah, it's, she very much wants the In and Out. Yeah, she wants the In and Out. It's all good. Enjoy the tunes, dudes. All right. Join us on New Tech. Trust me, be a good time. All right.